It is Wednesday? Wednesday. Good morning, everybody. The project for today is a new deck, a new porch. I'm going to rip up these one by sixes, replace them with new ones, and also extend it over the sandbox here because uh, we're not using the sandbox. Our dogs, unfortunately, uh, like to use it to go to the bathroom and we don't want our kid playing in that, obviously. So we're gonna solve that by covering this over, turning it into a porch and putting like a little kitty uh, picnic table on there or something so that when we're having, you know, wiener roasts or something, he has somewhere to go and sit. So I've measured this out. This is exactly six feet from there to the house. Six feet to 72 inches. You divide that by about five and a half inches, the width of a regular one by six. I know it says they're called one by sixes, but they're actually five and a half. So why isn't it called like one by five and a half? And it's not even one inch thick either, is it? Like, look at this. It's three quarter. It's three quarter. So why isn't it called three quarter by five and a half? It's not a one by six. Anyways, that's a topic for a different video. It's like just over 13 to go across here, going at the same direction. Uh, so 13, we need 14, 15 for here, so we have one extra. And then here, these are two foot sections. So two, four, I'm going to get, uh, get eight foot, so one by six by eight feet. So it'll be two, four, six, eight. That's one, two, four, six, eight, two, six, eight, three, two, four, six, eight, four. Five. We got 15 for here. We'd have one extra. So I'm going to get 20. 20 three quarter by five and a half inch by eight feet. Probably won't even be exactly eight feet either, but we have 20 of those. And we got to build the frame underneath here too, right? So we're going to need a two by four uh, to run along the side of that there, underneath there, and probably one, two, three running across that way. Maybe some hangers to hang them up on the sides, just give them some stability, and maybe some supports for underneath. I could build supports. I was thinking of getting those uh, cement supports that we had beneath our deck at our old house. Those sort of like those cement blocks that are sort of designed to, to hold up stuff like this. That would probably be better because if I build them out of wood and the moisture gets in here, especially in spring when all the snow melts, I could rot that wood. Maybe I'll get some concrete. So one, two, three. So I'll have one, two, three frames going across, and then I'll put one, two, three of those cement pods underneath there. Excuse my phone dinging. It's always dinging. So we'll have to get those sticks out of there, obviously. And then uh, where I put the supports down, we'll have to dig it down a little bit so it's even and flush going across. And we'll have hangers attached onto here and onto the two by four I'm gonna put over there. And uh, like I said, I'm no professional, but uh, I, I think I can get this done. This seems pretty straightforward. So I'm try to get this done today yet. So um, tomorrow we want to go into Winnipeg and do a Costco run and get a couple of other things done. Next week, this fence is getting done. At least it's supposed to be getting done. Our contractor is supposed to come next week. That'll be nice to have that finished up finally. Uh, if you're wondering, it's going to match the rest of this fence, so like a six foot fence, all of this here. It's just going to match it. We're just going to continue it on over there. That's just a temporary fence. So when we moved in, there was nothing there. And we needed something to keep the dogs in the yard. And so we've added that. Our dogs are too old to jump over that anyway. So it worked perfect. Okay, so for this project, I have determined that I need 20 1x6 treated, uh, 10 2x4, uh, 14 2x4 hangers. Uh, I'm going to use 2x4s instead of 2x6s underneath there. I don't need to dig down that deep because they've already filled it up with quite a bit of dirt and sand. Uh, and it's not going to be holding a lot of a lot of weight all the time either. There's just going to be a little kid playset on there. But I am going to do joists or 2x4s uh, every foot instead of every 2 feet because we're going to have 1x6 on the top. Whether or not that's the way you would do it or not, that's fine. That's the way I'm going to do it. That's, I might change my mind though. We'll see. So uh, 14 2 by 4 hangers, uh, 3 cement supports for the center. Oh, actually, I'm probably going to need more than that. Well, no, 3 might still do. I'll need to get some screws. I'd like to get an extra battery for my power drill because I only have one. 
I need a second one. Uh, a couple of bits. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to pick up post toppers and stabilizers for our, our deck as well. The one that we sit on. Uh, what else do we need? And I know, need to go over to my shop, pick up the saw, extension cord, saw horses, gloves. So I got a bunch of stuff to get done today. I hope I'm going to be able to get uh, most of this done today. We'll see. It's quite a bit. We're here at EG Penner in Steinbeck. I'm going here, get all this stuff, uh, get into the truck, and see what we can do. Maybe I can be Carpenter Josh for a day. We'll see. This is a pretty straightforward project. I never take on, like, super, super in-depth and complicated projects, unless I have a, <coughs> excuse me, unless I have a lot, a lot of time. But uh, this should be pretty quick, is what I'm thinking. I think I can handle it. I can. I can handle it. There we go. Positive. Positivity. All right. We had to go with two by sixes instead of two by fours because they were out of the two by fours that I was looking for, unfortunately. That's okay, two by sixes are better anyways, it's stronger. Okay, we also got fence toppers for our uh, deck there. Oh, it looks like one got scratched there. By the way, they put it in my in the bag. Okay, I'm gonna have to go in and replace that one. They put all these hangers in with that, those fence toppers. And they scratched it. I'm gonna go replace that now before I leave. I ended up just returning all of those fence post toppers. I didn't look at them that closely before I brought them out. Uh, fortunately enough, they took them all back and refunded me. They were in those little plastic bags, right? You take them out, they were all scratched, all of them. So they're like steel toppers, put them on top of there. I guess I could have repainted them, but you know, when I buy something brand new, I don't expect to have to go through the trouble of you know bringing them to my shop or somewhere where I can paint them and then paint them waiting for them to dry. I'm expecting them to be in new condition so I can take them home and use them, right? So they were very nice about it. I don't know, they must have been damaged in transit or something on the way here, no one noticed. So once I took them out, they were all, yeah. So I just, what I returned them. They were just sort of like an extra thing I was gonna do today, but we can do the fence posts another day. So now I gotta go around to the back, pick up my lumber Throw it in the back of the truck. Oh, I got spider webs all over my backup camera. That's great. It's always pricey doing these projects. It's about four hundred dollars. <coughs> Everything said and done. Oh, oh, you're gonna cut me off, aren't you? Yes, you are. Okay. All right. Didn't even look at me until she was almost in front of me there. Ah well, honest mistake. Stuff happens, right? Stuff happens. Another guy backing out, nice. I'm gonna get right front row parking. Oh, I was gonna park there, now there's somebody. Oh, he's gonna load up his truck right there. Okay, well, I guess I'll go park over here then. Okay, I'm gonna park right here. Good enough, good enough, right? Go out. So now what do I what I gotta do here? Is it the same at your lumber yard where you go to? So I got a pickup ticket now. Now I go into there and wait my turn for them to go get my stuff. They throw it in the back of my truck and then I can leave and they check me at the gate on the way out to make sure I got my stuff and not someone else's or not too much. I don't think they'd care if I didn't get all of my stuff, but they do care if I get too much stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They, they, they want me to get all my stuff, but it's, they check you to make sure you're not sneaking out with more than you should, right? At least that's what I think. I don't know. If, that's why I would check people if I own the business. You're stealing from me or what? Not me. All right, I'm all set now. Just gonna show them what I got here. And they'll let me out of the yard. Those cement uh, deck blocks I was looking for, they were actually out of them, so they had a different kind. That'll work just as well. So we use that. Hello. So are we having fun yet? Oh, lots of fun. Oh, yeah. Now the real fun starts. I gotta go build that. <laughs> yeah, a little patio for the kids. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See ya. You got that Steinbach friendliness. You know what I'm talking about? Southeast Manitoba. That's where the friendly comes from in Manitoba. Sometimes, depends who you meet. <laughs> our license plate, our slogan is Friendly Manitoba. And every Manitoban's like, uh, <laughs> well, depends. Well, I mean, Winnipeg didn't didn't contribute to that slogan at all. That's for sure. <laughs> but here in Steinbach, Winkler, Southern Manitoba, you know, yeah, maybe there's a few friendly people here. You can find them. <laughs> I'm a little biased though, because I am from the southeast. I will honestly, without any regrets, without any apology, will always say that Southeast Manitoba and Southern Manitoba is the best region of Manitoba. Hands down. Not even a competition. But again, I'm biased. But it's true. Just because I'm biased doesn't change the facts. There's two of our trailers here at Superstore in Steinbeck. Must be renting them off us for storage or something. I'm just going to the gas station over here to get myself a Pepsi because I think I earned it. I deserve a Pepsi. A nice cold one. I'm very excited about it. My favorite Pepsi is Pepsi Max or Pepsi Zero. Though I think the Coke Zero tastes better. But the Pepsi Zero has more caffeine in it, so... I'm like the only person who goes all the way around the parking lot in the designated driving lanes. Everybody else just cuts right over the lines. And that guy's parked right in the road. Yeah, it's chaos! Chaos, I say! A little mobile gas station here at the superstore. Quick park over here where I can make sure my wood in the back of the truck is visible to me while I'm inside. No one comes and snags it from me. Talking about how great the southeast is. Last weekend, my dad's utility trailer, you know the one I've had in my vlogs many times. We always, like, it's almost a family trailer. We use it for everything, right? Everybody uses it, <coughs> but it's my dad's and he's done a lot of custom work to it. We've had it for like 30 years, very close to it, if not 30 years. It got stolen last weekend out of Steinbeck here. Had the lock on it and everything. They cut through the lock. It's gone. So the RCMP know, I don't know how much they're gonna do. Uh, hopefully uh, they can find it. But, uh, you know, we put out posts across social media and stuff saying, hey, this trailer got stolen. It's very recognizable because of the custom work that's been done to it. Like, my dad custom welded a whole bunch of stuff on there. Uh, hooks for, uh, like, load securement, uh, lights, brackets for this, brackets for that, license plate bracket. Obviously, they're going to switch the plate right away, but the, the license plate bracket itself is, is custom. Like, there's a whole bunch of stuff on it that if we see it, even from across the parking lot, like a quarter mile away, we'll know it's ours. So whoever took it, if you take it out on the road and we see it, you're not gonna be able to convince us that you didn't steal it. So I'm wondering if he's taken it, or I'm, I'm assuming it's a he. Not likely that a woman stole our trailer, but uh, we'll let the woman off, we'll let the women off the hook on this one, right? Well, it's probably a dude. But I, I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe he wants to resell it. And if he resells it, whoever buys it, and we see it, I mean, what do we do? I mean, we're gonna have to go and tell him, hey, the, this is our trailer and then they're gonna have to go over who they bought it from and then they're in possession of stolen property I don't know how that goes because we have to call the cops right because there's there's been a police report made so they would need to be notified that we found it and then uh, they would have to go and uh, be there when we retrieve it and we'd have to prove that this is ours like you're in possession of stolen property that's a crime but if they're innocent and they just bought it off somebody like I don't know if that's their responsibility then, like when you buy a utility trailer used off someone privately, is it your responsibility to make sure that it's not stolen, that the, the serial numbers are legit and everything? Like, is that something you'd think of when you, because usually you just buy a trailer, like, hey, nice price on a trailer, I need one of those here, here's some money, and you switch hands, do a little bill of sale. But with the bill of sale, you'd have to put the serial number on there. And if they punch that serial number into anywhere, it would come up as stolen. 
But how many people are gonna do that? They can go and check to see if their utility trailer is buying used. Like it's an old trailer, it's like 30 years old, but it's in really good shape because my dad's been taking very good care of it. It's been completely rewired. The floor has been redone before. Like it, it was my childhood trailer. Like we've had that thing forever. So, kind of disappointing that that would happen in our community, but you know, crime is everywhere. And unfortunately, nationally across the country, it's on the rise, of course, too. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we find the trailer. Man, that trailer's gone, it's got stolen. Isn't that crazy? It always looks like a lot more once you get it in the truck. So these are those cement pads that we got instead, we've got three of them. They'll work just as good. All right, so we got all of our materials that we need here and we've made a good start i'm already pouring buckets of sweat because uh somebody over there has gotten me climatized to living in an ice box in an ice palace she likes the house cold and at first when we first got married and lived together oh i was frozen all the time and then all of a sudden i got used to it and then that was just normal for me now i come outside and it's well, my thermometer in my truck said 33 degrees Celsius today, so it's probably like close to 90 Fahrenheit, 85 to 90, somewhere in there, plus the humidity. And I am just sweating buckets. Look at me, I'm just soaked. My body's like, what's going on? Why are we in hell? But uh, this is what we're doing. So Britt cleaned up the whole sandbox and got all of the junk out of there. And then I pulled the sand away from that side there and I put that two by six there just now I actually put two of them one went underneath sort of underneath uh, against the frame of the little house itself just so that I have a good ledge up against this side because we're going to we're going to tear up this uh wood here these one by sixes tear them up replace them with new ones and then we're going to continue it around here over here so because they're one by sixes I'm going to put a a joist that's what you want to call it I'm not a professional carpenter. Excuse my ignorance. I'm an amateur. Cut me some slack, please. I, I, I've tried my best. But one foot. Every foot instead of every two feet. So every foot we're going to have a joist going across. And then we're going to put the one by sixes over top. And then we'll have a nice little patio here we're gonna pull some of the sand out of here some of it's gonna stay in there uh, but I'm gonna need to pull enough out that I can get the you know the the joists through there because we're gonna do one by sixes I was gonna do one by fours uh, two by fours right but uh, they didn't have any two by fours at EG Penner so I went with two by sixes it's better that way anyway stronger right and then underneath so there's gonna be this eight foot across so there's gonna be about uh, one two three four five six seven or so seven in here right and underneath three of them we're gonna put these guys just to add a little bit more stability underneath there even though we probably don't need it because it's gonna be resting on the sand and the soil anyways but just so that in the future in the distant future that we don't get any sag or anything I'm hoping that that's gonna help we'll see what happens we're uh, we're making progress though so and we're sweating a lot way too much i shouldn't be sweating this can you imagine if i live down in like florida where the temperature's like 110 and and more humid than this i'm sitting we're probably sitting at about i'm gonna say 85 to 90 fahrenheit like i said earlier and i am just cooking just what can i say i'm a canadian i'm not an american I might look and sound like an American, but put me out in the heat like this, and you'll tell very quickly that I am, in fact, Canadian and not American. <laughs> I like it cold. Not too cold. A nice, like, 23 degrees Celsius. What's that in Fahrenheit? That'd be, what, about 65? 60 to 65, right in there. That's the sweet spot. About a half hour later and about half a gallon of sweat. Okay, so I've pulled the sand away from the edges. 
I've got the joist hangers there. I used a small piece from what I'd cut for these pieces just to make sure that that's going to line up properly with the top. There's one every foot, like I said, so there will be no sagging. And I know I don't need it now that I'm looking at it, but we're going to put those three, one underneath the second one here in the center, the middle one, and second one there. So it's a one, two, three. So there's no way. This, this is going to be the most solid kids patio for a kids uh, picnic table that you've ever seen. If anyone ever digs this up a thousand years from now and looks at this, they're going to think this guy was crazy. How heavy were these people? Why did they need so much support? Well, I just went a little overkill, but it's better than making it too weak, right? I'd rather make it too strong than too weak. So, so yeah, I got the uh, joist hangers on there already. I'm going to uh, continue, put the seven across there as well, line them up. And all we got to do is cut the two by sixes, slip them in there, uh, pull out a lot of the sand. We won't need that all in there. And then pull that floor up there and then cut them all the size and finish it up with the nice one by sixes. It's going to look really nice once it's done. I think. <laughs> I hope. We'll see what happens. About another half hour later and temperatures have cooled down to a much better temperature now. Still sweating, but feel a lot more comfortable. So I decided against using these after all. I'm going to save them for another project in the future. I don't need them. Those uh, joist hangers will do just fine with those 2x6s. Plenty of strength. Look at this. I got this one in here already. They're strong. Plus the weight will be spread out over all of them when someone's walking on there, right? And it'll mostly be the kids on there too. Or Theo anyway. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna forget about those. It, it was too hard to get underneath there and get it perfectly level so that it wouldn't, uh, you know, sag onto it or so that that wouldn't push it up. It's just easier without them and they're unnecessary. So I've come to that conclusion. We will save them for uh, another project in the future. I'm gonna cut the rest of those two by sixes now, throw them in there and then the frame will be done. So I've got the last four cut, just got to throw them in there and we're going to have to get this sand out of here because I can't, I can't bury these joists in sand like that. It's going to hold the moisture and the wood's going to rot too quickly. So we will have to shovel that all out of there and bring it somewhere else. I don't know where we're going to put it. <sighs> One more update for today. Sun is set. Temperature is a lot better out here though. The humidity is still very high and I'm still sweating quite a bit but we have the frame done. I had to haul out the sand so that they're not touching on the bottom there. It's not touching the ground at all. So that way it won't rot, hopefully, as quickly. And we don't know where we're gonna put the sand. I had like five wheelbarrows full. So for now, I'm just dumping it in the corner right over there. And that's a problem for another day fix one thing and you make another problem over there but it's okay that's not a big one there we go so that's it for today i'm i'm pooped i'm gonna go in and shower oh have like 10 glasses of water tomorrow we're gonna rip up uh these here just pull them right up and put new fresh ones down and then also continue it down over there there'll be a nice little patio nice little deck there for him instead of a sandbox like i said the the sandbox gets filled with you know the dog's presence and their uh, urine and stuff and we don't want our boy playing in that obviously so this way and get the disgusting sand pit out of the yard out of the way and we're gonna put like a little picnic table or something up there for him right by the fire pit there I think that'll be a lot better. And then on this side here where the swings are, uh, Britt has plans for this area here. I asked her if we wanted to like make the deck all the way around here. And she said, no, she doesn't want wood over here because she doesn't want splinters in the kids' feet when they're swinging. 
That's a good point. So we're gonna get rubberized, like sort of like those concrete pads. Um, sort of like you know, like these here, like this, except the squares. Right, we got some over there by the door, and some over there in front of the the shed. Right, we can get uh, rubberized ones like that that are kind of squishy and more safe for the kids if they smash their face on it. If they're not smashing their face on concrete, it's sort of like rubber. We're gonna make a little rubberized area here under the swings for them. Um, that should work pretty good. Okay, but that's it for tonight. I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna sleep really good though. I'm not a professional at all. I don't do woodwork for a living. I'm not a carpenter. Though my dad's really good at it, so I have a little bit of a hand up there, but I did this by myself. What do you guys think? Pretty simple, right? I mean, how could I mess this up? <laughs> okay. Well, in tomorrow's video, we'll continue on this. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to drink, like I said, with 10 glasses of water. And prepare myself for that. I'm going to get a really good sleep. Right, Chevy? You're going to help me more tomorrow? You pretty much just watched. You think you're a supervisor or something? You're a pretty good looking supervisor, I'll say that. She's out here keeping the plants looking nice. Doing a really good job with all of them. Constant work. little guy down here. Let's show off some of the work that she's done. Look at this one. This one got huge, eh? Yeah. I can't really take credit for that one. I bought that one pre-planted. Still wasn't even half that big when we brought it home. No. Wouldn't fit in the car. <laughs> wow. We got our little buddy, Mr. Who. Right here, he's supposed to scare away the birds that keep pooping on our deck. Not sure if he's doing his job or not, but... Look at this thing. There's no way I could make a house look like a home like that. Do you have to water them every day? I don't even know. Uh, when it's this hot, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why don't I regret it? And she's got a whole bunch in the front, too. But they just have to trust me. They look just as great, if not better. <laughs> but, yeah, so Theo has been put to bed. His uh, patio over here, we've made some really good, really good progress on it. I was hoping to get the whole thing done today, but I can never properly estimate timelines. This is what we got done. It took quite a bit to get all that sand out of there. It's just in a nice little pile over there for now until I can figure out what to do with it. It doesn't look like so much there, but it sure felt like a lot. That was like five full wheelbarrows. And now I got it set the wood. You can see the light shining beneath there. So that the wood is not touching the ground beneath it at all so it'll be able to breathe. I'm just gonna finish that up yet. Hopefully tomorrow. I'm still on vacation for a little while so I've got some time. This is only the first week. We got some plans tomorrow and then uh, what's, what's tomorrow? So tomorrow's Thursday. We got some plans tomorrow afternoon. Friday I don't think we... Oh, Friday we're going into the city. We're doing a Costco run. That should be fun. Saturday will be a fun vlog because that's the day we rented that pontoon. We'll be going out on the water. And the next week, we'll see. One of those days I need to go to the shop and do some work on Old Blue. But uh, hopefully, I'm hoping... <laughs> I'm hoping that hopefully there will be some time set aside for you know, relaxing. Whatever that means. Oh, 
bottles all ready for first thing in the morning. Britt never misses a thing. She's got a lot on her plate, but handles it like a champ. Making sure the dishwasher's working. Yeah. And one more thing I want to show you guys before I go to bed. I'll show it again tomorrow morning at the beginning of the vlog if I can remember to do that. This was sent in to us in the mail. Isn't that great? We love it. And it came with a card. I don't know if she wants me to share her, I don't know if it's a public phone number or not, so I'll just say. Angela Butcher, acrylic artist. Just a little gift to brighten up your day. The Flanagan family. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Britt and I love it. As you can tell, we put it up in our bedroom. Diesel, you like it? Oh, he loves it. He's a little tired right now. Retirement, you know. But these two over here. And we have one more. He's still in the living room, isn't he? Chevy. Let's go to bed, man. Let's go to bed.